Hey guys, and welcome to another video on MCAT strategies that are going to help you simplify this test and make the score that you want to make to get into med school. The strategy that I'm about to explain is called simplifying the question stem, but it's not really simple. If you've watched John's video on flow charting, then you kind of know how this video is going to work. I'm going to go over a passage, give you guys examples of how to simplify the question stem. But really, simplifying the question stem doesn't mean anything until you understand the passage. So if you haven't watched John's video on flow charting, definitely go give it a watch now. So simplifying the question stem. Most of the time when I ask students to simplify the question stem in a tutoring session, especially if they're a new student, they'll kind of go about it in some way that flexes how many synonyms they know, or they just reword the sentence. And as much as that sounds like it's simplifying the question stem, it's really not. Those methods don't help us answer the question. They don't help us identify the basic science that's being tested. The best way that I can show you to simplify the question stem is simply to show you questions and then how I would simplify them. I'm going to be using the same passage that John used in his flow charting video. Um, you can see my flow chart at the top of the page in red. So this first question is a really good example of how simplifying can help you answer questions. Let me zoom in a little bit. So it's which type of enzyme catalyzes the conversion of glutamate to GABA? Okay, well, I don't know anything about glutamate or GABA or conversions or enzymes within the brain, um, but I am given in the passage, which when I was reading through this, and when you were reading through this, you should have caught this, it's strange that they gave us the structure of these molecules. They don't normally do that for every structure. Why would they do it now? That's a strategy called foreshadowing. They're adding that in because they're gonna ask a question about it. So in this case, normally I would, ask, I would ask students to simplify the question stem. And they would say, okay, this question is basically asking which enzyme takes glutamate to GABA. That does not help me at all. I still don't know anything about catalysis in the brain. I still don't know anything about glutamate or GABA. What I want y'all to do is step away from the question a little bit. Get a little bit of passage information, something that's going to help you simplify this question in a way that actually makes sense and in a way that helps you answer the question. You should be thinking, well, I'm, I'm thinking about the conversion of glutamate to GABA. What's the difference between those two things? I'm given the, the chemical uh, structure of them. What's the difference? Looks like, um, you know, we added a proton, which I'm not too worried about. That could just be difference in acidity, um, difference in pKa. I'm not losing, I'm, or I'm not gaining a hydrogen. I'm gaining a proton, which is different. Though a big difference is that I am losing an entire um, carboxylic acid group. This is where I want you to take it and run with it. I want you to say, okay, I'm losing an entire carboxylic acid group. That is the conversion of glutamate to GABA. Now this question simplifies down to which enzyme catalyzes the loss of carboxylic acid or which enzyme removes carboxylic acids? Then that is a simple question. We're not talking about glutamate. We're not talking about GABA. We're not talking about the passage. We're talking about a basic science. We're talking about, you know, something that you learned in your content guide. So then it's an easy question and answer choice. What enzyme um, helps you lose a carboxylic acid? Decarboxylase. What is the most likely reason why Tuj1 was used to assess the phenotype of cells that have incorporated the five candidate genes? Again, I'll give you an example of kind of what a lot of my students would do when they first start out. They would say, okay, this question is basically asking, um, What's the most likely reason why Tuj1 was used in the five candidate genes? Okay, well you just cut out some of the words and you also completely changed the meaning of the question. You also, um, you put Tuj1 into the candidate genes when you shouldn't have. So I don't want you to just 
clip out words to try to make the question seem shorter either. So no synonyms, don't just clip out words that completely change the question stem. So let's take a step away from the question again. Let's get some passage information. So it says um, the phenotype of cells that have incorporated the five candidate genes. That's a long-winded way of saying what kind of cell they're using in the experiment. Which, what kind of cell are they using in the experiment? What is the phenotype of the cells that have the, the candidate genes in it? It's a neuron. So basically this question is now, what's the most likely reason why 2 is 1 was used to assess neurons? So now, if we want to put it in layman's terms, if we want to talk of, you know, I don't talk formally ever. And so I, my simplification for this is, what's 2 is 1 got to do with neurons? Okay, and what does it have to do with neurons? Um, before I even look at the answer choices, I know from the passage that Tuj1 was a neuron-specific class three beta tubulin. I don't know what the heck that means, but I do know what neuron-specific means. It means it was only in neurons. So, um, what's Tuj1 got to do with neurons? Let's, let's go. A says Tuj1 induces expression of the tau EGFP protein. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, it doesn't. And I know that from the passage. I'm not coming in as a tutor knowing that Tuj1 as a protein does not induce this tau EGFP protein. I'm saying the passage didn't tell me that. So I'm going out on a limb and saying that that's probably not the right answer. B, Tuj1 is expressed in fibroblasts and neurons. Ooh, this is an attractive answer because what I really want the answer choice to say is that Tuj1 is expressed in neurons. And this just has the little fibroblasts in there that can't hurt too bad, right? Wrong. Fibroblast makes this answer choice completely wrong. And think about it. If Tuj1 was expressed in fibroblasts and neurons, how could they tell the difference between their cells in the end of this experiment? They couldn't. It's probably not the right answer, even though it's very attractive. C says Tuj1 is an early marker of neural differentiation. All right, if my, if my question is, what's Tuj1 got to do with neurons? And my answer choice is Tuj1 is an early marker of neural differentiation. That makes sense to me. That makes sense why they would use that to assess the neural differentiation that they're trying to induce in this experiment. D says Tuj1 is present in embryonic and adult cells in culture. I wasn't given any passage information to tell me that it's present in both embryonic and adult cells. And I'm not even sure if they're using adult cells. Um, I like C better. The correct answer here is C. I know that, um, you know, the first question was a little bit of a more simple simplification. Um, I need to like come up with some better words. It was an easier simplification, more straightforward. Anyway, um, most of, most MCAT questions have a little bit more to them, so they're going to be more like this second question that I just simplified. Um, let's go on to the third one because it includes a little bit of that figure interpretation that we were talking about earlier. It says, of the five candidate genes, which produces a factor that most markedly increases the efficiency with which fibroblasts commit to a neural lineage in vitro? Uh, again, just like the last question, it's very wordy. So let's actually get down to the meat of what they're talking about and put it in terms that we understand best as a test taker. Um, I'm gonna start at the end, you know, um, the efficiency with which fibroblasts commit to a neural lineage in vitro. Okay, in a roundabout way, that's what this entire experiment was about. We're going, if we look back up at our flow chart, we're going from fibroblasts to neurons. We're committing fibroblasts to a neural lineage in vitro. In vitro just means in a petri dish, essentially. In the lab, not within your body. 
Now the question is down to a little bit more simple of the five candidate genes, which produces a factor that most markedly increases this neural differentiation that we're trying to do. We're basically asking which factor is most important in this experiment and in this neural differentiation. That's what we're asking. And so we went over that a little bit when we talked about the figure, but one thing that's important is that you realize that this minus sign right here means that they're taking out that transcription factor and that's in the figure caption. Like I said, figure interpretation is another strategy um, that's important for the MCAT, but basically um, in a roundabout way, always read your figure captions. They will straight up put answers in them. So <clears throat> if now my question is, which candidate gene is most important to neural differentiation, we can see that if we take out ASCL1, um, we see a big drop in neural differentiation. And you may be asking Maggie, how do you know that the y-axis is neural differentiation? We already talked about how TUJ1 is an early marker of neural differentiation, how TUJ1 is neuron specific. And so if we have a TUJ1 positive cell, that's a neuron. So this is really asking the average number of neurons. That's what the y-axis is. If we take, um, like I said, if we take ASCL1 out, then we don't have any neurons, so it's got to be the most important candidate gene. I know that what I've done here is anything but simple. I've been doing this method, using this method in my own test taking for six months and then I've been teaching it to students for six months. I've been doing this for a whole year now. That's the only reason that I'm efficient at doing it. I don't expect you guys to be able to simplify the question down to a useful basic science question right away. But what I do expect from you guys is that you start to simplify every question that you come across in the MCAT. Any question on an FLE, anything um, on car drills, anything on um, passage practice, simplify it down to see if you can get it down to a basic science. Or for cars, it's a little bit different. Get it down to, um, is this a main idea question? Is this an arguments question? That kind of I hope that you guys learned something from this video and I hope that it's useful to you as you continue to study for the MCAT. I'm gonna link the, the last two questions of this passage um, in just a second here. See if you can simplify them down and get the correct answers. And I'll show you my simplification and the correct answers in a bit. Thanks for watching everyone. Like and subscribe to this channel if you like free MCAT practice.